Have you wanted to go on local TV or even better, pitch Good Morning America? This episode is definitely going to be for you. Today, I am interviewing Laura Saltman, who is going to be diving into media pitch examples. And we're not giving just her examples of what she has used to get her books on multiple networks, but we're giving you specific examples of a food blogger, a travel blogger, so that you can really figure out what's going to work best for you. You guys, I would love it if you would hit a like on the video as you are going through so that I know if this is content that you continue to want to hear about. And if you're curious how I'm pitching brands, make sure that you sign up for the masterclass that you're going to find down in the comments. I am here live with Laura Saltman. Laura, how are you? Good, how are you? Very good. I am so excited for this interview. As you guys come in, if you could just give me a hey, give me a good morning in the comments so I know who is here with me. Laura's going to be giving all sorts of examples about how to actually pitch to media. Um, but I want you to be able to ask any questions that you come across. And we're just going to kind of dive in and see where it takes us. Laura, will you introduce yourself and a little bit about your business and previous experience? Yeah, so um, I am a former TV uh, entertainment reporter. I worked on Access Hollywood. I was their digital correspondent. And then I left um, several years ago to raise my son and do some other things. I started a production company. And um, about a year ago, I started working back on television. I, I um, host segments for a show called Designing Spaces on Life that airs on Lifetime TV. And another show I do some segments for as a correspondent. It's called The Balancing Act. But in the interim, I'm also a, an author and I've written three books. And um, so I have a lot of experience um, being part of the media, pitching the media now that I'm an author, because that's a whole new experience for me. You know, I, I was used to people coming to me and wanting to be on television. And now I'm on the opposite side, having to ask them to put me on TV. So it's it's like a, a interesting collaboration now that I, between myself. Yes. No. And I love that you get to pull from both sides of it because I think often we're so used to just giving it from one side that it can only have that one dimension to it. And you and I actually met in person in Las Vegas at Connect Her this past summer. So it was actually really interesting and it was all meant for me to sit at the table that we ended up sitting at. Um, and that was honestly for me meeting you was the reason that made that whole conference worthwhile the entire trip. So I do appreciate having you so here. This is actually a talk I gave at Connect Her several years ago. And this the table was packed. Everybody always wanted to know about how do you, you know, do your own pitching to the media. Yes. So my audience is obviously primarily bloggers. A lot of, some people have like service-based business, health coaching, things like that. So if we were to take a look at how would a blogger benefit from local TV if they're not quite wanting to do it yet, what would be the benefit for it? Okay, well, first of all, I want to um, correct a myth about local TV that does not exist anymore. When I was first coming up, local TV was local TV. If you were in Peoria, you were just on in Peoria. If you were in New York City, you were just on in New York City. But now you can be on in a small market. And once you have that link, the link that you can put on YouTube, you can put on Facebook, wherever you can put that link, it becomes not only national, but international. So don't da discount being on your local news because I think that's, that's an old school model that doesn't work anymore. And so if you can get any media, no matter what it is, it's international. It has the chance to, to be international. So don't, don't look at something as a small place. There are no small places anymore. Everything can be a huge benefit for you. It's such a good way to think about it, too, because it is larger scale. And when you, I think TV, you think, oh, well, it's not going to go anywhere. It's just local to us. But then, like you said, you get a link and you're able to put it wherever it needs to go. So I love that. Um, so if we were to start from the very beginning, yeah. uh, one of the things that I am known for is pitching brands. And I always talk about who you should reach out to pitch. Yeah. 
So what are we looking for when we want to pitch someone for media pitches? So, I mean, I would always start with the easiest sell, which is what is your niche? So if you're a food blogger, if you're a health blogger, I would go for those niche type things because the niche is where um, you're going to have the most respect. People are going to go like, oh, okay, yeah, that's what I do. So yeah, I'm going to look at this. If you try to go huge, it doesn't mean that you're not going to get booked. It just is a little bit more difficult because you're competing with all these other things and all these other lifestyle spaces. So I would start with your niches. And I will say this, Jenny, it's not hard to get media. It's just a lot of work. It's a lot of like busy work. It's a lot of getting, you know, finding the information, finding the context. So it's just be prepared to do a lot of work. I, I'm, I always tell people like, if you can hire an intern and the intern can go find you the list of podcasts or the list of uh, local shows or uh, and the producer's names, like that's the greatest thing that you could ever have because that's where the hardest part is. That's the hardest part is gathering the actual information of who is the person, who's the producer, what's the show I want to be on and all of that. And then once you have that information, you can look at it and prioritize and say, okay, these are the things that I want to go after. I want to go after this podcast. I want to try to get, get booked on this local station or this local station. I want to go after the Today Show. I want to go to Huff Coast. Whatever you want to do, it's just coming up with your list of where you want to reach out to. I love the way that you talked about being able to think about it that way. No, it makes so much sense. So what are some of the key components of a media pitch? So the first thing is to try to make it as personal as you possibly can, because, you know, you can put out a press release about your new cookbook or your new health coaching program or your new costume making uh, business. But those press releases are a dime a dozen. Everybody can send a press release. You want to make a personal connection. You want to figure out who is the, the decision maker and what is what makes us connected? What is it that they're going to see in me and go, oh, I recognize that or so whenever, wherever you can find a personal connection is always best. And that means like telling everybody, you know, oh, I'm looking for, you know, media opportunities. Do you know anybody who works at this local station or this or this magazine or anything and going to networking events, networking as best as you can in the community to figure out because you never know who knows somebody that you know. And that's going to be your, your easiest way. And it doesn't mean it's the only way. It just means it's the easiest way. So when I was with you in Vegas, I ended up getting on a station in Las Vegas because I knew the reporter. And so I simply reached out to her and said, hey, I'm going to be there. And I just had to come up with a really great pitch and a really great hook for her. So that was my easiest connection. But that doesn't mean I couldn't have reached out to every other station while I was there and, and done my homework and get that. I just went for the easy sell because I knew I was going to be able to do it. But there's certainly, you know, a way to connect to people. And so I would say to what the way you find people is you find them on Instagram, you find them on Facebook, you go to a station website, you go and you look and see who are the producers or the reporters, and try to find the person who does what you're doing. Because everybody in the media is looking for experts. And if you have a blog, you're an expert. That's it. I always tell people that. Once you have a blog, you are an expert. It makes you an expert, whether it's a candy blog, whether it's a uh, vegan blog, whatever it is, it makes you an expert. So yes, the media is looking for you because I love to say producers are lazy. They don't want to do the work. I know I was a lazy producer. If somebody sent me a really great crafted pitch that just, it connected to my brain, I was like, oh, okay, I would do that. Or if it was something unique or different, I was absolutely open to having somebody on regardless of whether they had thousands of followers or no followers, as long as they had a really good pitch and they had something to show me like a blog, like a video, whatever it was that I could say, okay, yeah, I could put this person on TV. So Deborah actually just asked a great question. She said she's been on a local station, same station several times around the holidays. Do you think it's okay to reach out to other local stations? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, that's a great question. When I was on in Vegas recently, I, and I posted the link to my Facebook page and some other places. Within two, three hours, I got a um, an Instagram message from a, another station in Vegas. And the girl was like, oh, can you come on my show too? And unfortunately, I, I, there wasn't enough time for me to do it. I just didn't have time. It, but I would have done it in a heartbeat. So absolutely. It doesn't mean that you, you, know, you don't have to take the same pitch. You can tweak your pitch a little bit and give them a different segment. But certainly, reach out to everybody as much as you you know, like if the Today Show called you and then Good Morning America called you the next day, would you be like, sorry, GMA, can't yeah. 
it. <laughs> like, you, know, you would be like, yeah, sign me up. So absolutely reach out to everybody for sure. One of the things that I remember when we were having this conversation in Vegas is you used the word hook yeah. to me. Can you explain exactly? Because that, like, when you explained that to me, I was like, oh, that makes so much more sense. Because my, like, the people that are watching and the people that are listening to the podcast are used to hearing me talk about what, how to find contact information. And you got to hustle and you just got to work through it. And it takes time and you just got to be willing to do the process because that's what I teach, right? So, that hook piece that you talked about, it like definitely was a mind shift for me. Okay, so um, let me give you an example. So a hook is basically like your story idea, your segment idea, and you want it to, to jump out. You want it to stand out. So if I, um, I'll give the example of my, again, I'm just gonna go with my Vegas thing because I think it, you can go to my website and actually watch the segment. And so I think it will, it will connect once you see it. Yeah. But uh, my friend, who works at Vegas, I said, hey, I'm going to be in Vegas and I'm uh, speaking at this conference and I'd love to come on and talk about my books. And she's like, okay, but like, what are you going to talk about? And then she, I, she's like, I mean, I, you can come and talk about you whatever you want because you're my friend, but, but she's like, like, what are you going to talk about? So I kept thinking about like, well, I can't just sit there and talk about my book because they won't book you for a book unless you're Reese Witherspoon, unless you're Oprah Winfrey, unless you're this big name celebrity. So I'm like, I got to come up with a hook. So what I decided to do is my books are in this spiritual self hate, self help new age new thought space and so I came up with this idea of spiritual pancakes and the whole concept was what do I do every morning for the first 5 10 minutes of my day to make my day a good one and so I came up with different things that I do the first one is I get, I wake up and I say a prayer the second one is I take to my journal the third one is I do ayurveda and I do oil pulling the fourth one is I make a green smoothie. And the fifth one is I make a healthy breakfast, which I would call my spiritual pancakes. And it just meant like they're vegan pancakes. And so I, I sent this entire pitch with all five elements. These are the five things I'm going to talk about. I'm going to place them on plates. So it has like a breakfast feel to it. And um, this plate is going to have uh, the vegan pancakes. This plate is going to have a journal. This plate is going to have a sleep mask. This plate is going to have my, my oil pulling stuff. And this plate will have that. And I sent that to the producer and literally she was like, great, see you at 8.45 a.m. Because she knew, I mean, she knew because I've been on television that I like, I knew what I was doing. And so it was like, I literally hand fed her my segment. This is the hook. It's called Spiritual Pancakes. It's about your morning mindfulness routine. And I'm going to come and I show up with my plates and this is what I'm going to do. And so, uh, and so that, that was my great hook. Now I've done other things before. I did a segment for E! News. I had a um, holistic health blog called Dish Detox, which I don't have anymore. So I didn't have time for it. Um, and she's like, oh, you, I want you to come on E! What can you talk about? And I was like, well, how about if I take like some Thanksgiving uh, recipes that are, you know, your traditional ones and I'll turn them into like the healthier non-GMO version of that. And that was my hook. Instead of like, hey, come on and talk about Thanksgiving, it was, I'm going to come on and I'm going to talk about this specific element. So give me an example of like something, a, a blog, a person, a product, and I'll give you an idea for a hook. Okay. So Marisa is actually live with us. So I'm going to use her site. She okay. does homemade Italian cooking and it's about bringing generations together through the Italian food that she cooks Um she does a little something else, but I'm, we're going to stick to that. So what would you suggest? Okay. So for that, I love that. I think that's amazing. I think that that's something where I would go and I would pitch it based on one of our like national days. And if you know anything about the national day calendar, you can just look it up online. It will tell you every national day. It's national pasta day, national cupcake day, national hot dog day. National, um, take your left arm and raise it in the hand all day, like whatever it is. There's a day for it. And so I always tell people that a great hook and a great way to pitch is to tie it to something, whether it's a holiday, whether it's a, one of those national days, whether you know you saw, you saw a story in the media that connects to it. And so fi it's finding that those things. So like, for instance, you know, uh, for that, I would be like, it's, um, some sort of big Italian holiday would be a great holiday that I would pitch for, whether it's, you know, national pasta day, national sauce day, whatever. And then that's when I would go to the locals about probably six weeks out, seven weeks before the actual holiday. And I would come up with, with a pitch for that. Like, 
and maybe it's grandma's recipe. So instead of like pitching it as a big whole giant segment about, you know, Italian dishes, it's like, well, I'm going to give you this one recipe. It was my grandmother's. It's 50 years old. And uh, it's something that only she knows how to make. And she taught it to me. And now I'm going to teach it to you. So people are like, oh, I want to know what that secret is right there. So it's just finding like a little, little thing that's going to make people go, oh, yeah, I can't get that. And now you're telling me I can. Yeah, let me do that. Okay. So I have another one for you. Will you give me another example? I know we didn't prepare for this at all. Okay. Um, health coach for women over 40. Okay. Health coach for women over 40. Okay. So that's, that's a simple one because that is a huge target market, especially when it comes to television, because that's your age range. That's your sweet spot. That's the people that are still watching television. They're the ones who are actually watching the news. And so that's like your sweet spot. So um, I would target the problems. So instead of your general, cause you gave me a general thing, which is, um, Okay, so I'm a health coach for women over 40. Okay, great. So let's target some of your um, your pain points. What are some of the pain points about women over 40? Well, I am over 40, so I can tell you one of my pain points is my belly fat. So what I would tell that person is I come up with a um, segment that is five things that every woman over 40 should do to target her belly fat. And then when you put your pitch together, Tell the the producer in your you know in your email, and th this is it. Like these are the things that I want you to um, that we're going to do. So we're going to do this exercise. We're going to talk about uh, this food you need to take out of your diet. We're going to um, tell people where they can go, and so everything is kind of like put together for the producer, so they don't have to think about it. They know exactly what it is, but it has it has a pain point. In all right, so we just got another one that came in, and this is a little, so what about family travel, Carrie asked. Okay, family travel. So um, again, go back to those national days. Go back to what's in the news. Like every morning, be on you know the Yahoo sites or CNN or whatever, and see what's in the news. Where are people, um, what are people talking about? Maybe there's a story about a, uh, a woman who got robbed in, in Peru or somewhere. And so now everybody thinks Peru is a terrible place to go. So your pitch would be like, well, guess what? Peru is actually a very family friendly, friendly place. And, you know, even though it's getting some bad press right now, I want to tell you all the amazing things about Peru and why you should actually feel safe to take your family. And here are some guidelines for staying safe in Peru. So so somewhere in there, take that what that pain point is and say, OK, here's I've actually been to Peru. And that would be my email to dear, you know, Jenny at Fox TV. You know what? I, I just saw a new an article about a woman who got uh, robbed in Peru. But, you know, I've actually taken my family there five times and it's quite safe. You just have to know where to go. So I'm going to come on. And I'm going to talk about, you know, these are the way to stay safe in Peru. I love that. And I love that you keep talking about what's the pain point, because yeah. if you can solve it, that's going to make the producer's life so much easier and it's going to connect to more people. Yeah. So I guess my question becomes from that is because I'm always one that, that advocates for anyone in my audience that if you're going to do a live broadcast, if you're going to do Instagram stories, there has to be a purpose behind it. And we can't just be trying to grow our followings on social media. It should be about getting those eyes back to your site back to your list to grow your list. Is there a way to naturally grow your list or your site when you're doing a segment so that it doesn't feel so like, follow me here, here, and here? Or do you? I think, I mean, I feel like that's the whole purpose of being in the media too, is like, it's getting that attention on you. You know, it's like, look, if you get on the Today Show, you're going to notice that all of a sudden you go from 10,000 followers to 15,000 followers very quickly. If you get on a local uh, media, you may not see as much of a jump, but you'll definitely start to see your numbers follow. And then what you do is you can take that link and you can take that and you can you can put that on other places. And so you can say like, OK, here's the places that I've been, you know, and that that one link, that one segment will it's like momentum will lead to the next thing, will lead to the next thing. And then it'll lead to more followers and more followers. So um, and you don't have to be so so worried about like uh, in what when you're actually on TV or it's an article like people will go to your site, like they'll find you if they're interested in you. If you've given them some information that is relevant to them, they will go and find you and they will follow you. So that's why I think like actually getting press is really important and getting into the media and doing these podcasts and stuff like this are important. Every little link 
counts. That's going to be my new phrase. Every link counts. I love it. So I'm actually thinking of someone in my audience who recently was featured on Rachel Wright as far as the website, though. Um, and also it was on Good Morning America, her recipe. So it's Wendy from Monday's Box. She yeah. has an amazing um, site that's very niche. She creates desserts that are able to get shipped to soldiers and the military that that's her entire site and the recipes that she creates. Okay. So one of her recipes was featured in an article of like top 10 Halloween kind of things. Mm -hmm. Is that something where she could then go back to good morning America and say, listen, this is more of my story. You featured me here for a Halloween thing, but this is my story of why I create what I create. I mean, I just think that she has just such an amazing reason for why she creates her desserts that it would make sense for them to yeah. want. In that sense, I would say I would go back to Good Morning America and I would come up with another recipe for another holiday or something else, some other hook. And then when you're pitching that, then I would also say like, and I think it's very important. I want to talk about my story. I want to say I want to say why I actually do this rather than just do the recipe because that's more of a just know like get letting the producer know like please ask me these questions so we can you know there's a, there's some heart to this story and it's not just about a recipe. Um, and so I would maybe work the email backwards like and so I would say I would mention that in the beginning like here's why I created this. Oh by the way I've already been on your show and put that sort of at the end so they're like. Oh, she's already been here. Well, how easy is that? You know, because once you've already been somewhere, it's much, much easier to get on. It's just you just got to come up with a new hook, you know, yes. like I could go on. I could go on the Today Show once for my book. But are they going to have me back on for my book again? No. But if I come up with an amazing like m morning mindfulness routine or I, you know, something that that will give it, it's like my book is kind of an aside now. But now I'm an expert in this. So they'll just continue to have me back as an expert. So one of the things that always seems to hold up bloggers when they're reaching out to brands is we talk a lot about the subject because people's inboxes are so busy. Yeah. Is there a subject line that you think works really well for media pitches? Yeah. So don't just say, hi, have me on or uh, I'm a food blogger. It's it's that same hook mentality. It's like something that's going to jump out about you, about you or your story or your segment or your idea. Um, and one of the things I learned, there's actually a site, and if you don't know about it, you should look it up. It's called HARO, H-A-R-O, Help a Reporter Out. And what it is, is people in the media, everywhere from national outlets to actually bloggers, they're looking for experts. So they're looking for you. They're looking for experts to um, give them information, to be an expert on everything from beauty, food, fashion, business, tech. I mean, the list is, is endless. And every morning, afternoon and evening, you get these emails and it says, I'm doing a story on this. I'm looking for this type of expert. And so when I first found out about it several years ago, I would send in my, you know, my pitches and I, res I would respond to them looking for an expert and nobody would ever get back to me. And I was like, why am I no one getting back to me? And then I went looking for, well, what, what am I doing wrong? What are the best practices when it comes to Harrow? And I realized that one of the issues is they get so many emails that if you just put responding to your query or I'm an expert in this, nobody's paying attention to that. But when I started changing my headlines and making it relevant to their stories, all of a sudden I started getting people getting back to me. I had one of my books featured in an article about the top 20 self-help books for 20 somethings and it was featured as number one. And that actually came from um, from a Harrow pitch. And so it's, it's about finding something that Think about it when you read the headline, would you open the email? If you wouldn't open the email either, then don't send it. So like for me with the spiritual pancakes thing, uh, I think my headline was something like, are you hungry? It's time for your spiritual pancakes. Someone's gonna read that and go, what on earth does that mean? As, hi, I have a segment for you. So right. I that like wow moment where someone, it, like where someone has to open the email because they're like, what is this about? rather than the simple, like, I want to be on your show. Okay. Totally makes sense. And now my next question kind of goes along with the whole pitching. So for us, I always tell my people, it's all about the follow-up. You cannot send an email once and expect to hear back from people. Is that the same? And if so, how long do you wait in between your first pitch? Well, I can tell you from uh, my own, like when I worked at Access Hollywood and I would get pitches all day, every day from, you know, all over the place. 
Um, I had my days were super busy. And so even if you sent me the most amazing email, there are times when I just don't have time to get my e email. Even if you sent me the most amazing email and I thought to myself, oh, I should book that person. I got busy and I forgot about it. And then I would have simply forgot about it. So you cannot just send one email. And then if somebody doesn't get back to you, be like, oh, I guess they didn't want my segment. No, you have to follow up. And that means following up within a week, I would say within a week, you know, hi, just checking in about this pitch would love to come on the show would love to be in your magazine on your podcast, whatever. Uh, you know, if you have any questions, please reach out to me. And then if you don't get a response from that one week later, I would send that third follow up and, and say, you know what, I'm, you know, sorry to bother you. I'm sure you're super busy, but I, I hope. And for me, by the third one, it's usually when I'd be like, oh, right, right, right. Yeah, I wanted to have that person on or, oh, I wanted to email that person back or, oh, I wanted to pitch that person, you know, up the flagpole and see. And then uh, and usually sometimes actually people would like get on the show by that third you know, response. I always say like if the, by the third time they haven't got back to you, that's when I would move on and forget about it. But don't be discouraged because a lot of times it's it's about timing too. Like you may be pitching a segment that isn't ready for the time right now, but maybe two or three months down the line, maybe it's more relevant. Like I, you know, I, I develop TV shows and I've been pitching a show and like when we pitched it two years ago, we sold it to a production company, but nobody at the networks bought it. But now with what's going on in uh, with the Me Too movement, this show is like I have got to get back out there pitching it because it is the perfect show. And so sometimes it's just about timing. And uh, so never, ever give up. There's a, a woman. Her name is Janice Bryant Howroyd. She is a uh, owns a billion dollar company. And uh, she said to me that she, the, the word no, she never takes no. No is always a maybe. So if you think of it as a maybe then you just keep going until somebody finally says, leave me the heck alone. But right. no, I've never, I mean, all the time I've been pitching myself and all the time I've, I've never had someone like, just leave me alone. Don't bother me anymore. In fact, if I have been bothersome, eventually they've been like, you know what? I appreciate it, but it's just not for, it's just not going to work right now. But you know, if you come up with another idea, then, you know, then yeah, come back to me. So. Right. No, I love turning. Think about different, uh, just think about different, like you said, pain points. Think about creative ideas. Think about different ways you can uh, change your recipe to make it like that. Something's never, some, someone has never ever heard of before. Yes. So we have a couple questions that came through. Jerry Ann, who um, writes celiacmama.com, said, "Do you need to send a video link of you with your segment pitch? So yes. if you're cooking, if you're talking about food, should there be a video, or is it necessary?" Yeah. So when you're pitching, what you want to do is you always want to have um, a little like link to your website. So you at the end of your website, you should have um, your, you know, your name, a link to your blog. And what you should do is I always do it in Dropbox is in Dropbox, you should have a picture of you, a picture of your recipe and what it would look like when it's all done. And you don't have to ha actually show them the recipe and what you're going to do. But if you happen to have done any video, then I would absolutely include a video because people want to know that you're going to be good on TV. Like for me, I can get books on TV like that because I've been on TV for 15 years. So they already know I'm going to be on TV. They know that they can trust me. But if you've never been on TV before, they're going to want to see that you actually, you know, are good on television. Now, that's not to say that you won't you might not get booked. And um, I don't want to say her name because I don't want to embarrass her. But uh, when I worked at E! News, there was a girl who was a blogger. And um, she actually had a publicist and her publicist pitched this woman to me and I loved her pitch. It was in the fashion space. It was something I'd never heard before. And I just thought it, like her hook was so phenomenal. And so I went out on a limb to book her on the show and she had no video. She'd never been on TV. And when she came on, she was terrible, terrible. But her idea was still so good. Like her hook was so good that the segment still looked good. We just sort of had to edit her version of it down and put more of the fashion in than actually her. Um, and so, you know, it's just about like, are you ready for television? Are you ready to actually be on TV? So people for the most part want to see what you look like. And that doesn't mean it has to be the most professional thing. If you haven't done any TV before, that's okay. It can be Facebook live. It can be a YouTube video, whatever it is that you have, that's video of you doing something. It's important so they know that you're good on camera, you can talk, you know, you have a personality. I love that. So important. And I, 
just easy to show for so many of us that are bloggers to be able to say, here's a YouTube link, here's a live broadcast, whatever it might be. Um, so Deborah asked, is it a good idea to message a reporter directly, like via Facebook or Twitter? You can, if you can find, I mean, from my own perspective, I've, I've had people reach out to me on, on Facebook and Twitter and other places and Instagram. Um, you can keep in mind, you know, it depends on how many followers they have. If they have a hundred thousand, whatever followers, they may not see it. And you, you know, you might not get a response. If there's somebody who like me on Twitter, I have, you know, maybe 6,500, um, Twitter followers. If someone has sent me a message on that, chances are, I'll, I'll probably see it. Um, and so I'm somebody who respond, not everybody will respond, but they, but they can, if you can find the, the connection, if you make that personal connection, I think that you'll have a much better chance of actually, you know, getting to them. Um, in terms of local news, just so you know, it's, it's actually very easy to find the emails for people in local news. If you go to their websites, um, especially the smaller markets, usually at the very, very bottom of the page, there'll be an about section or our team and typically their emails will get, will be in there. And you'll, so you'll pull up like a reporter or whoever assigned the desk and they'll say, and their emails will be there because they're looking for stories. Like they need stories. The media needs stories. And so they, they, you know, they're open to people pitching them. So don't ever be afraid to reach out to somebody um, via their regular email. So much good information. So Laura, we had a question earlier and I wanted to kind of follow up and wrap up with, can, where is the best place to, for people to find you? And also tell us about your books. They're obviously in um, mindset and mindfulness. Tell us a little bit more. So you can look, uh, you can learn everything about me at laurasaltman.com. Like I said earlier, if you want to watch my segment, Spiritual Pancakes, to see how I put it all together, um, go to my media and um, press section of my website. And my books are really um, about motivating you to recognize that you have the power within you to create whatever you want. And the only thing really stopping us is doubt and fear and anything that's coming from the enemy of our ego. Because the minute something comes up and you say, oh, I really want to get a book done on uh, the Today Show, all of that fear and doubt comes in like, oh my God, they'll never, I, I'm just a little blogger or I've just got this or that. No one's ever going to it's like it's so my books are about empowering people to recognize that that's 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 doesn't it doesn't matter who you are or what you have or haven't done that if you can focus and recognize within you that you have the power to create whatever you want that you can absolutely do it um my books are like i said they're in the new age new thoughts um that sort of self-help genre. So they're not for everybody because not everybody is really, you know, in that space where they're ready for it. But if you're ready for it and if you're looking for a new way to uh, to go about living your life, I think these books are immensely important. I'm incredibly proud of them. They've changed my life. Like, you know, really quickly when I left Access Hollywood, people were like, oh my God, don't like, why would you ever do that? Why are you leaving a national show? You never get back on television because they figured I was I was done for and then as I got into my 40s they're like oh you'll never be on back on TV like forget it you should just do something else and I wrote this book and within I don't know maybe three months of having written my books I was back on television on national television doing you know and doing something even uh, better than I was doing before so and it was all based on you know recognizing my power within that I was worthy enough to be back on TV, no matter my age, no matter what everybody had had said to me. So I know you've read part of my books, so hopefully they're helping you. Absolutely. And you said it, it's laurasaltman.com. Yeah, yeah. So that's my site. You can go there and like there's links to my books and there's links to uh, all sorts of information about me, my blogs, and my some of the videos that I've done too. Perfect. Laura, thank you so much for taking the time and coming on and talking to us. I know this was a ton of great information, um, and I'm excited to see some of my people on TV. <laughs> yeah. Find your hook. Find that good hook. Be creative, and I promise you, you guys can get booked on TV. And not just TV, podcasts, magazines, digital sites, anybody that was willing to talk about your brand, your products, go after them. Perfect. Thank you so much. All right, guys, I will see you all next time. I hope you guys found that information so very useful, especially the media pitch examples. You can't quite be getting multiple examples to figure out what could possibly work for you and your business. So 
I would love to know what it is that you are looking to pitch for your business. What niche is it? Down in the comments of the video, I would love for you to put that there and tell me what niche and who it is that you're looking to reach out to. Make sure that you, if you haven't already subscribed that you do so. We are putting out a new video every single week with interviews as well as specific trainings that I'm doing. I appreciate you guys all so much and I will see you all next time.